Hello and welcome to the magical and mystical world of labyrinths. Here's a labyrinth sketch that I've just been messing around with. I'm going to do a longer one, but first of all, I'm just going to do some doodles and talk a little bit about mazes and labyrinths. I've been I'm really fascinated with these for a long time. I've put in more than one funding application to try and build a maze or a labyrinth. So far with no success, but you can do a simple um, maze or labyrinth in your garden or even in your house. I think Trix, who I work with in Mossy Crow, is going to make a film about it at some point soon. So, the difference between a maze and a labyrinth. A labyrinth is a path that never ends. Well, there's one beginning and there's one ending. So when you draw a labyrinth, you have to leave yourself enough space to come back out so your ending and your beginning meet. Yeah, so that's kind of a classic labyrinth. Isn't it like that? Maybe, or... Yeah, I think they come out from the centre. Yes, that's it. It's like a classic ancient Greek labyrinth. Whereas a maze, a maze, there are choices, there are options. So you can have, you can go in different directions. It's more like a branching line, a maze, whereas a labyrinth is more like taking a line for a walk. Anyway, I am going to do a labyrinth drawing, I think. Mazes are confusing. So a labyrinth. I'm going to take my time and get lost in the labyrinth. <coughs> so they often... Um... Yeah, I'm going to use an oil pastel. Labyrinths often get used as um, metaphors for our journey through life, which is long and winding. And I always think that a labyrinth, or possibly a maze, looks a little bit like the human brain, or perhaps it's like your intestines. So as I'm drawing this, I'm having to be a little bit careful not to draw myself into a corner because I need to be able to come back to here eventually. So it's like taking a line for a walk because my crayon is just staying on the paper all the time. But it's a bit of a game of like, how will I get back to here? Because if I close this route off completely, I won't get back to the beginning. But that's okay, you can experiment. It makes me think a bit of thought, you know, how you can get very lost and caught up in thoughts and you can get tangled and you can go round and round in your thoughts. But the beauty of drawing labyrinth is that we've got the overview. So we're not going to get lost because we can see the whole thing from above. So it's like being above your thoughts rather than trying to get untangle your thoughts you can sort of zoom out a bit and be above your thoughts so that's my labyrinthine line I quite like that and I'm gonna mess around and work into it a little bit so here's an example of um, a bit more of a tight and intricate labyrinth that I've been drawing I started here and spiralling around, kind of go into spirals and come back out. But you can see how you kind of have to just be careful not to draw yourself into a corner, like I have to leave access to my beginning. You can go on all kinds of detours, just like in life, twisting and turning. And you can make it as intricate as you want. But yeah, I've got to be able to get back in here again. So that my end is my beginning. Mm. 
There we go. It could be lovely to fill the entire page with that. Perhaps there could be another labyrinth, maybe multiple labyrinths touching each other. So there we go, a cosmic labyrinth that I got quite lost in actually, I could have just carried on and on. And there's the um, intricate one, little multi-dimensional one with different colours, filling it in. So I found that really enjoyable and hopefully you will too if you give it a go.